The last time these two teams met in Nashville, the game wasn't decided until the final moments. Vanderbilt scored 20 points in the fourth quarter before Tennessee escaped with a two-point win. This year, the Commodores hope they can seal the deal and beat the Vols for the first time in 20 years. It's the Battle of Tennessee coming up next. It's a series that dates back to 1892, and it'll be the 97th installment between the Volunteers and the Commodores. It's our SEC Game of the Week as Vandy wraps up their 2002 season. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Neal, and welcome to the Coliseum in Nashville. And today, Tennessee fans will have a chance to see their regular quarterback back under center. That is Casey Clausen, who three weeks ago sprained an ankle badly against South Carolina, re-injured against Miami, missed last week against Mississippi State. They turned it over to James Banks and picked up the win, but Casey Clausen is healthy enough to get the start today for Tennessee. And joining me as always, Dave Rowe. And Dave, last week with Banks under center, Tennessee ran the ball to the tune of 64 times out of 72 offensive plays. Cedric Houston was the man. Oh, he is the man. I think he's just the next in a long list of great running backs at Tennessee. He brings to the grand game all the elements that you want in a running back. He's got speed. He runs through tackles. He's got vision into the hole. He makes great cuts back and forth. But Dave, he also brings durability. As evidenced by last week, he ran the ball 32 times, 149 yards. And I asked Philip Fulmer, I said, can he run consistently 30, 40 times a game? He said he just gets stronger. We'll see what happens today with that running attack of Tennessee. And speaking of running games, Vanderbilt has had some injuries throughout the season. Their latest is to the freshman who's an all-SEC caliber running back, and that is Quane Doster has a severely sprained right ankle. Boy. I don't know if we can go, Dave, but what does that mean? Oh, I think that's a huge loss. He's the future of Vandy's running game. They've got a list of people that are going to line up today. You think of Barracola, Tant. I mean, they just got him, Dave. Who's going to step up? They will also use Lorenzo Parker, a converted cornerback, and move him back to tailback as well today. So that man, Bobby Johnson, has had to adjust things offensively. We might see Vanderbilt throw the football a little bit more today. Philip Fulmer has relied on a running game the past couple of weeks, and heck, it has worked extremely well as Tennessee is starting to put some points on the board as the season winds down. Of course, Philip Fulmer, 101 wins now as the head coach of the Tennessee Vols. And the Vols won the toss, they deferred, so Vanderbilt will receive Lorenzo Parker back to return the kick, but it's a short one taken at the 10. Out over the 35, it's Sharon Thompson. And as always, Buzz Baker joins us on the sideline. Buzz, you have more on today's game. Yeah, Dave, you talked about Quane Doster and can he go. If he can't, more of the load falls on the shoulders of quarterback Jay Cutler, who you commented on many times this year. He has been courageous in the face of a lot of fire. He is inching up on that freshman passing record for Vanderbilt. He should pass it today. John Gromos, the guy who said it, is up in the Commodore broadcast booth. If he can get that record today, Cutler, the Commodores have got a shot. A lot will be expected of number six today. Six foot three, 215 pound freshman. So Vanderbilt will open up at the 35. In motion is MJ Garrett. Flag already down. Play clock was at 16, so that's not an issue. to the snap. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Down remains first. Thank you, Mr. Wagers. Let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineups offensively for Vanderbilt. Dan Stricker needs 97 yards to become the school leader in receiving yards. He also needs right around 140 to become the SEC's all-time leader in that category as well. Offensive line, Jim May, 41 consecutive starts for the senior, playing his last game for the Commodores. Keep an eye on the right guard, Mack Pyle, just a freshman, getting better with each game. Cutler throws on first down. Pass is incomplete. Stricker really wanted the completion. Won't get it. That'll bring up second down. 
Interesting to see the adjustments that uh, Vanderbilt doing. Going from a shotgun. Let's see if he got his hand underneath that. Nope. The camera does not lie. Did not get his hands under there. Dan Stricker, 42 receptions this year. Here's some of the Boo Birds. Fans watching it on the scoreboard here, but the call was correct. Yes. So second down and 15. The Commodores need to get to the 45. Cutler to throw again. It's his receiver, Brandon Smith, and he loses about three on the play. Julian Battle makes the tackle. Tennessee's starting defensive lineup, uh, not what they had hoped for at the end of August, but they have made do. Franklin had a big game against South Carolina with 10 tackles. Moore and Hand are the only two defensive linemen that have started every game. Linebacking core, Moore and Whiteside have been great, the top two tacklers on this team. And Jason Mitchell got his first start, the youngster, last week against Mississippi State. Julian Battle, Greer, Wilson, and Jones are your secondary guys. And John Chavis is the defensive coordinator. Willie Miles, number three for Tennessee, out with a pulled groin. Another injury for this club. Pass is caught and dropped by Smith. They'll say it's incomplete, and he was popped at the 44 by Eddie Moore. Boy, not the original hit took the ball out, but the second hit in. The second man that comes in is Eddie Moore. Watch this. He's got the ball right now, but watch Moore come in there, right there, and rip the ball out. Great tackle. Well, I don't know if he ripped the ball out. He ripped his leg out. <laughs> yeah. Man. Eddie Moore with his 89 total tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, three sacks as well. Here's a bright spot for Vanderbilt. Greg Johnson, the freshman punter, third in the NCAA, averaging over 43 yards per kick. And hits another good one here. A high spiral that sends Mark Jones back to the 18. Jones gets it out to the 28-yard line, and that is where Tennessee will take over on a 53-yard punt. Well, Casey Clausen will make his way onto the field with this Tennessee offense, and he is third in the SEC in all-time statistics in terms of completion percentage. It's just a little over 63% for his career. He's almost 65 this season, and he has got a big, big brace on that right ankle of his. It almost looks like a lead boot. We'll see how much that slows him down. I don't think Philip Fulmer will ask much of his quarterback today other than to get his team in the right spots and hand off to that man Cedric Houston tackle made by Marty Morgan our Chevy offensive lineup for the volunteers today goes like this Whitten who has been so spectacular this season we heard from him in the pregame show saying that he has thoughts of turning pro but will make that decision after the season Scott Wells up front making his 34th consecutive start. The coaches say he has just been solid week in and week out. It's been a good offensive line when healthy. Second down and seven now for Tennessee. Big gaping hole. Cedric Houston. Run down at the 32-yard line by Lorenzo Parker. And Dave, when you crowd the line as Vanderbilt did that time, everybody acting the line. Once he breaks through right there, look, he's into the secondary. Now, pick up a block right there, work to the backside, use that speed. Boy, nice block. Troy Fleming, number 27, gets down there. He had a wonderful block on the play. A gain of 37 for Cedric Houston, who had over 100 yards in the first half last week against Mississippi State, finished with a career high. 149. Clausen will throw on first down. Has his man at the 25. Falls forward to the 24. That'll be Montrell Jones. And the Vanderbilt defense brought to you by Chevy. Chuck Losey, the senior, making his last start for this Mandy team. Kenzie Carter also up front. Hillemeyer, Harrison, and Morgan. Marty Morgan, a guy the coach is really high on. I think he can be a good one. The secondary, Shaw, Gibbony, Parker, and Jones. Those guys have been banged up all season long. Here's Houston again, a little delayed handoff. Take it inside the 20, and that'll be a first down for Tennessee. 
Boy, Dave, I can see all the, already that Vanderbilt has got to get off the blocks. They've got to be able to slide to the ball. They're trying to bring their two safeties up in there and make it an eight-man in the box. But if you don't get the running back, if you don't get him, he's into the secondary once he breaks through. That time, even on that last run, a lot of time, look for the hole, find it, nobody there. Good opening drive for Tennessee. First and 10 inside the red zone. Houston, a little stutter step. He's done that little stutter step three times, and he's picked up big chunks of yardage in the process. Javon Hay makes the tackle. Well, he's got those quick feet. And as you said, it's a little stutter step. It's look for the hole, anticipate it. Then arm tackles are not going to bring him down. And boy, Jason Witt, he gets all the credit. Look at there. He should get a lot of credit on that block. That's a lockup block. When you lock up with that outside uh, backer, you're just nailed on him. You know, he gets a lot of credit for all the catches, but he's a good tight end both ways, running and blocking. 53 yards on the ground, and they will add to that total right here. Cedric Houston inside the five, down to the two. Lorenzo Parker makes a touchdown, saving touchdown tackle, and Tennessee ran it 10 straight times on a drive last week are very similar once again. Yeah, you see no penetration. Nobody in the line, in the backfield. Nobody disrupting the path of the running back. If you don't get penetration and you're just catching blocks, it's a long day on defense. First and goal. Jabari Davis gets whacked by Hunter Hillenmeyer. And Dave, that's penetration. When you get that middle backer, like you see number 47 there, Hillenmeyer, shoot through. You disrupt the running play. Watch the penetration he gets. He comes up through it, and he meets him. Look there, over top. That's what you need out of a middle linebacker. Vanderbilt needs some other people like that to step up. That is Hillenmeyer's 150th tackle. Second and goal. Touchdown, Tennessee. Jabari Davis with his ninth touchdown this season. Well, in a big man on big man contest, Tennessee wins the big man. They get a great up front block, fullback goes through, locks in there, and then Jabari just goes right over top. Now look at Troy Fleming's block right there. You see him locked over there on the right side. 27 takes out Hillenmeyer, the middle linebacker. That was the Cedric Houston drive. And that's the Alex Walls. Extra point. It is up and it is good. So Tennessee, with 10-11 to go in the first quarter, takes a 7 to nothing lead, making their head coach a happy man. Auditorium. Tried to get in there last night. Told Miles Clint Black. He told me to go home. <laughs> Couldn't figure that out. Well, Vandy's defense trying to figure out how to stop that ball offense that just marched it down the field. Really behind Cedric Houston. He was the story. He had 61 yards of the 71-yard drive. And Javari Davis capped it off with his ninth touchdown this season. Alex Walls will kick off for the Volunteers. Lorenzo Parker back, although the last kick was short. This one's short as well. Dropped by Parker, but picks it up. Parker out over the 20, did a nice job getting it out over the 20-yard line. That's where Vanderbilt will take over. A 14-yard return by Parker. Mark Jones makes the special teams tackle. We will see a lot of Mark Jones today. He returns punch. He's on most of the special teams and is one of the safeties. There is Quane Doster, the freshman, the true freshman out of Tampa, Florida, who set a school record for freshman running backs this year with a 798 yards. You know, he has three 100-yard games against SEC opponents and four overall, so a big blow for this Vanderbilt offense. Cutler, quick throw off the fingertips of Brandon Smith, the sophomore out of New Orleans. Brandon was hot earlier this season, but has cooled down in terms of catching the football. Well, Dave, if you want to take pressure off your defense, your offense has got to move the ball up and down the field. You can't go three and out, three and out. You can't do that. You've got to move the chains, let your defense regroup. They're over on the sideline. They're talking about it, what they did right and wrong, but you just can't throw them right back out there. The 
little discussion where the ball was. Looks like maybe Tennessee might have moved it back a yard. Let's check in with Buzz. Dave, you haven't seen Rashad Moore out there, left defensive tackle for Tennessee. They're going to hold him today. He's developed a neck problem within the last 48 hours. He won't go, but he's on the sidelines. He is dressed. Thank you, Buzz. Here's Tant. Tant takes the handoff for gain of three, maybe four. Whiteside and Veal converge for the tackle. With a Jefferson Pilot Sports crew is on the road covering SEC football. You ought to know this by now. <laughs> yeah. We like to eat at Huddle House and always enjoy their big house breakfast and lunch platters. Third and six. This is a tough situation for Vandy because those Tennessee linemen are coming after you. You're going to put a lot of pressure on them. Cutler stands in there, fires, passes through the hands of his receiver, Dan Stricker, and that is unlike Stricker, and Cutler got popped as he let it go. Or did he ever. He stayed in the pocket. He stayed tough in there. He had Stricker. Now watch this. Stay in the pocket. You know pressure's coming. You got to step up a little bit, throws it, gets thrown down, but that's a pass that really Stricker should have had. That ball was right there. He's got to be able to catch that. You got to catch that. Boy, Cutler comes to the sideline. He doesn't. He looks like he's having a tough time. When you walk like that, you look like he's hurting. Johnson's last punt went 53. Mark Jones takes this one at the 25 and slips down. And that won't be the only slip we will see today. This is not a very good field. Tennessee leads it seven to nothing. We'll be back after a word from your local stations. Go in the first quarter from the Coliseum in Nashville. Handoff goes to Troy Fleming, the fullback, Hunter Hillenmeyer. Makes the tackle. Gain of about three on the play. Well, this defense has got to step up. They've got to get penetration, got to get in the back, the back in the backfield. Jay Cutler hobbled off the last series, and he looks like he's got that hip problem. And uh, trainers continue to work on that right hip. And there's Benji Walker, who saw some action earlier this year when Cutler was suspended for a game. A couple of tight ends, and here's the handoff to Clinton, who hurdles one defender and then tripped up by Parker. Lorenzo, slow to get up. Gain of five on the play. That'll bring up third down. Well, again, you got to get penetration. You got to get pressure on the quarterback. This is almost a sure pass situation. Well, not really. Third and one. I thought it was about third and four, but they, now they've marked it third and one. Big man on big man. Don't get fancy. See Troy Fleming come off the field. That's not good. Houston and Davis in the backfield. Tight formation. First down, Tennessee. Cedric Houston. Boy, I don't see Tennessee doing anything fancy. You know, you've got a quarterback who's got a bad wheel. Just sit back there and hand it off. For the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs, visit your local Toyota dealer today. There's the right ankle. It's an ankle. They call it an ankle-slash-foot injury. And it is wrapped very tightly today. And off goes to Houston, and that gets about three on the carry. Well, David, I can tell you, if you're in Bandy's huddle right now, and you're inside that huddle, they're telling somebody get penetration, somebody get off their block, somebody lying in there, because, I mean, you got a quarterback, he's not going to run. He's going to be standing back there, so just take off. Right now, they can't stop the run, though. Five defensive backs in the game. And the handoff goes to Houston, and he's just... Getting to that hole in such a hurry and with power, Gibbity brings him down. Well, that first series was all Cedric Houston. He ran through holes. Look at that hole. Great cutback. He's got speed to get downfield. He's got strength to run inside. Find that hole. We talk about his vision, his quick feet. You talk about that stutter step. I just like the way he runs. Just a sophomore, he's going to be great. 
Already with 77 yards. A little play action. Casey Claus at the fire pass is caught for a first down by Jonathan Wade, the true freshman out of Shreveport, Louisiana, who's got great speed and has been getting better and better the last few weeks. And boy, this is a tough catch because he's looking back into the sun. Just a quick out gets that separation, but look at that great concentration. Look the football in, look the hands. Stretch out there, when it touches your hands, you own it, pull it back in. There is Jonathan Wade, 5'11", 180. That's his fifth reception this season. Wade is in motion. This time Vanderbilt steps up and stops Cedric Houston. He might have lost a yard. Lifter Taluska makes the tackle. Or leads the way, I should say, as a bunch of gold jerseys in there. Vanderbilt hasn't worn gold on gold, by the way, in terms of gold jerseys, gold pants, since the late 1980s. And interestingly enough, the last time they beat this Tennessee team was in 1982, and they wore gold on gold. Second down and 11. Here's Wade, played well by Parker. He steps up and makes the tackle. They'll give him a, a gain of about three on the play. That's the fifth tackle already for Parker. Well, that was good close by the corner. Number 20 plays on the ball. This is just where you come off the line, stop a second, and then hope you get separation. But watch Parker come up in there. Number 20 gets him, holds on. Boy, I tell you what, Dave, had he been watching the football, he might have had himself yeah. six the other way. Absolutely. Parker also will play a little running back today. And a double duty. Here's a chance for Vanderbilt to stop the ball. It's Casey Clausen will drop back in the shotgun for the first time today. On third down and seven, looks like Vandy might be bringing some pressure. They'll fall back. Three-man rush. Flag is down. Pass is caught. First down and then some. Cedric Houston running like a man on a mission. But it appears that Michael Munoz might have popped up and will bring it back. Well, it's on the line of scrimmage, and if you're a Vandy fan, you're hoping that it's Michael Munoz. 20-yard gain, well, I think, will be nullified. In wagers? Illegal formation on the offense. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Down remains third. Yeah, that's the rule where you have to have the lineman up on the line of scrimmage. Munoz is sitting right in here. And you'll see he's just off the line of scrimmage. They're saying that, he's, that they have to have six men up. What happens is those offensive tackles, they want to get back a little bit. Oh. There is Anthony Munoz. You know, when he played, you could line those tackles oh, yeah. about uh, three <laughs> yards deep like fullbacks. But yeah. this year, they've made a concerted effort to keep the tackles on the line of scrimmage. Shotgun again on third down. There's a little reverse to the speedster Wade, and he's dragged down for a loss of three, and it's Hunter Hillenmeyer. Well, Hillenmeyer had outside containment on that play, and he stayed home where he needed to be. Didn't take the play fake action away. Watch number 47. Slide to the ball. Now he's got backside containment. Play's going the other way. Look at him stay there. And when he gets his hands on you, you don't get away. Look at that. He grabs you, rips you down. Boy, Hillemeyer was kinging on the tight end, Witten, and as soon as he saw Witten yeah. come back and make that block, he knew something was up. He got his head up field and made the tackle. Colquitt's punt is a high kick. That will drop down at the nine and bounce to the one. And that is where it is stopped. And it's not the one yard line, it's the one foot line. Omar Gaither with a nice play on the 43 yard punt from Dustin Colquitt. And Vanderbilt is back up. We will return to Nashville and the Coliseum after this. Tennessee leads Vanderbilt 7 to nothing. 3.29 to go in the first quarter, and as Vanderbilt is backed up, they could certainly use the services of that young man, Quan A. Doster. But he will watch with a bad ankle as Vandy literally is a foot away from their own end zone. Cutler with a quarterback sneak and a bad hip. I'm sure that didn't feel good. 
Well, that's you're just trying to get it out of trouble. But I think what you need to do is sit back here and pass. Did a little play fake action in there. Quarterback sneak isn't going to pick up too many yards. You see him stuffing them in the middle. Look at that Tennessee line coming up in there. You may pick up a yard, but you're trying to get a first down. Maybe just play fake, bring it back, throw it. Cutler 0 for 4 throwing the football today. Ted Kane, the offensive coordinator, has seen his team outscored 198 to 92 this season in the first quarter. That amounts to just a little over the first half, but they've uh, averaging just a little over three points per game in the first quarter, and that's close to a safety. They will say he's just outside the goal line. Boy, the one thing you don't want to do is run lateral along the line of scrimmage against Tennessee. They've got that great speed. Matthew Tant takes the ball. Now look right here. He goes to the outside. He almost loses it. Neal comes up and just sticks him. Again, don't run lateral. Got to run up through the hole. Have confidence that the hole's going to be there. Carlton Neal, the 250-pound sophomore out of Chicago. Loves this kind of weather. Third down and 10. Vandy's going to take a timeout. And might as well let the de a delay a game. Yeah, exactly. I had to go ahead and let the clock. I mean, how far, but how much further back can they go? This may be the shortest penalty in uh, college football. Prior to the snap, delay of game on the offense, five yard penalty. Now remains third. Half the distance to the goal. Half the distance to the goal. Well, Dave, third down and long. You're Vandy, what do you call? I, I throw it. I play a little play fake action in there, make my fullback, and then I try to find Stricker. He's at the bottom, bottom of the picture right out here. I find, try to find him in that one-on-one -on -one position. He's the lone receiver in this formation. The bottom of your screen. Oh. Cutler just keeps it. It's maybe two yards on the play. Jason Mitchell and Whiteside will get credit for the tackle, but Vandy will have to punt it away. And Benji Walker quickly gets loose again as Cutler hobbles off to the sideline. Yeah, I wonder how much Cutler has hurt because on a, on a quarterback sneak, you're not going to pick up seven, eight yards. Boy, he is, uh, Greg Johnson is very deep in that end zone. And bobbles the snap. It'll be a safety. At least Johnson fell on the football. He tried to get rid of it very quickly, and it cost him and Vanderbilt two points. Well, I almost thought safety in this position when they were backed up on the one one uh, yard line. I thought, why not take a safety? And this may not prove to be bad for Vandy. He does. He was going to kick it. He falls on the football. That's not an intended safety, but that may not hurt in this situation. So that makes it a nine to nothing game with 124 to go in the first quarter. Boy, nothing going right for Vandy so far. Well, one of the things that has gone wrong, Dave, has been an injury bug, and it looks like maybe it's affected their quarterback, Jake Cutler. For more on that, let's check in with Buzz. Yeah, Dave, you talked about it being in the right hip area, but actually, if it's right there. there this is tough to explain on TV, but there's a little knot right there where your back meets with your backside, and it's some sort of muscle or something right there, but we've all had it hurt before. Gluteus maximus, Buzz. Uh, no, nah, it's a little above that. <laughs> yeah, right. A little north of the Maginot line. Yeah. But anyway, he pulled it, and what happened is it's really tightened up on him, and what they've been trying to do on the sideline is stretch him out, but it obviously affects when he plants, and that's why they were limited in that situation from throwing it out of the end zone, and so they've got Benji Walker loosening up now and getting him ready to get in there, and uh, so the question is, on a cold day like this, can Cutler ever get it to the point to get loose enough to get back in there, Dave? Yeah, Buzz, well, I just saw him walk right by Benji and slap him on that backside, and yeah. I, apparently that's, you know, wishing him good luck going there and make it happen. That's communication between quarterback to quarterback, meaning you got it. Bad punt, but bobbled by Tennessee. They fall on it. Vandy nearly had a fortunate break, but Tennessee has it. Marvin Mitchell is the man who has his hands on the football, but is still down on the ground. He got hit pretty hard after that ball hit the turf. Yeah, that that was a terrible punt. I mean, that one. 
It almost worked out for uh, Vandy in that they could have recovered it, but the uh, ball has to be kicked from the ground. You can't return that. You can't recover it. It's not a free kick because it's a punt. But again, they were really fortunate to come up with that football. Can't see really how he gets hurt. He just got kind of rumbled over there. I wonder if he just fell on top of the football, maybe knocked the air out of him. Ryan Cuffey came yep. in there. Make that final hit on Mitchell. Uh, they're stretching his, uh, his ankles out. You can see him leaning back. Oh, good to see him get up. Oh, he's uh, in some serious pain. We hope he's all right. Mitchell was back up at that middle linebacker spot behind Keon Whiteside. Maybe we can see what happens to him. They get kind of got hit up high. Might have twisted that uh, ankle underneath the pile where we didn't see it, but it was it was clearly up in the chest area. But it uh, he's reacting like it's an ankle. Mm. Lawson on first and ten, going deep. Nice tight spiral, looking for Wade. Off his hands. Coverage from Aaron McWhorter, but Wade should have had it. Oh, absolutely, great Wade's, throw. Yeah, Wade's got that great speed, and you can see him just increase that speed on the tail end of it. No pressure on Cloth to stand it back there. He throws it high. And watch Jonathan Wade come in here. If it hits you in the hands, you got to catch it. Hit him right up in the chest. That was a perfect pass. McWhorter was about a half a step behind. It wasn't horrible coverage on the speedster Wade, but a nice throw from Clawson. And off goes to Jabari Davis, the sophomore out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Our Ice House scoreboard today. Of course, a few games today have a little bearing on who will play in the Fiesta Bowl. This one among them. Ohio State leads Michigan by a point in the second quarter. UNC over Duke. Third down and eight. Now, can Vandy get some pressure? They have to come with somebody else. Just a straight four-man rush. Swing it out to the near side. Fleming, the fullback, is going to be very close to the first down. The marker's at the Vanderbilt 44-yard line. If the ball's touching the 44, he'll have the first down. When you can see when he came out of the backfield, watch this, it's just a little swing pass out of the backfield. But right away, he saw that marker. And you can see him just run for the determination to make that marker. Don't go out of bounds. Stretch forward. Boy, he was close. They're going to give them the first down. Boy, Fleming has uh, been a real asset to this team this year. He has uh, provided plenty of tremendous blocks, specifically lately, the junior out of Franklin. He also has 18 receptions this season. High formation, Davis the tailback, and he'll take the handoff. Runs hard, picks up about seven on the play. Gerald Riggs, number 31, the true freshman out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, last week. Dave got a few carries, and in that, he ended up breaking his finger and uh, surprised us. He played the second yeah. half with it. He thought he just kind of twisted it, but they found out he had some, uh, some serious damage in there. So we'll see a lot of Houston and Davis and possibly Riggs, but maybe those two guys. That'll do it for the first quarter. The Tennessee Volunteers lead it 9 to nothing. We will come back to the Coliseum in Nashville with quarter is in the books in this matchup. 9 nothing. Tennessee leads Vanderbilt as we move on to the second quarter. Dave Neal, Dave Rowe, if you can't tell, he's 6'8", <laughs> I'm 5'9". I saw you happened. standing up there. On the <laughs> no, and you're an old Raider with no coat on. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Making me look bad like that. <laughs> We'll see if Vanderbilt can't give us a football game here on second down and short. Need a couple of stops. They've uh, struggled offensively, hasn't they? Opened up with pretty good field position and couldn't do anything with it. Boston to go to the air. Off the fingertips of his intended target, C.J. Faden, who had a big catch last week against the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Our Gatorade first quarter stats will be pretty much dominated by the team in white. Rushing yards 94, total yards 124. And Cedric Houston, who had 61 yards on the opening drive, has 77 total yards on the ground. And that is our Gatorade first quarter stats. And you know what that tells me? Uh, Vandy is lucky to be down only nine to nothing. Here's the pitch to Houston. He'll pick up the first down at the 32-yard line. Justin Gibney makes the stop. At halftime, 
We'll be taking a look at the all-tell halftime stats. Buzz Baker will be joining us for all that. Get you caught up on what's happening in the SEC scenarios. In terms of the SEC title game, we know Georgia is in. And congratulations to the Bulldogs. Here's the handoff and a big hit by who else? Hunter Hillenmeyer. Well, Dave, you know, coming out of the tunnel this morning, about two hours before the game, I asked him a question if he watched his high school team play for a state championship last night. He looked like, he looked at me and looked like he wanted to fight me. <laughs> well, just be glad you didn't get the ball on this play. <laughs> yeah. That's smash mouth when you jump up in there and you tackle him chest to chest. Plays with enthusiasm. I mean, what a great list of linebackers they've had here at Vandy, and, and he just joins that list. Lawson on second down and 11. Has to scramble for the first time today. Locks it up. And Fleming couldn't hold on to it, but probably would have been out of bounds anyway. Looks like we have a flag down on the near side. Let's see if we have pass interference on the defense. Possibly a hold. That'll make Bobby Johnson. Uh, a little happy because he ran out of Fleming ran out of bounds and came back in yeah. as the first man to touch the football and yeah, the that is a no-no yeah illegal touch but you know what's amazing I was surprised because I thought Tennessee when they got down in this situation they've been running the ball running the ball I wouldn't go away from the run I just keep on running it illegal touching on the offense the penalty is declined third down next week it's our season finale, and it should be a dandy of a football game from Knoxville. Kentucky licking their chops, hoping this is the year. It's been a long, long time since Kentucky knocked off Tennessee. I think 1984 was the last time that happened. It'll be next Saturday, 1230 Eastern, 1130 Central. Hope you can join us for all of that action. The whistles stop the play once again, and appears timeout taken by Tennessee. So Tennessee takes a break. We'll take one as well. 13.51 to go in the second quarter. We'll be back after this message from Texas Pete. Tennessee 9, Vanderbilt nothing. 13.51 to go in the second quarter. The Vols looking at a third down and 11 from the 33. Got to bring pressure. Lawson steps back, has plenty of time. Throws on the run, pass is caught. That'll be a first down. Tennessee, good catch from Tony Brown, the sophomore at a Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. And Dave, when you don't bring pressure, you allow a quarterback to just sit back there. Look at this. No, no real pressure. Slides up here and just buying a little bit of time and finds his wide receiver. You can't do that. You have got to force that quarterback to get around the pocket. You can't let him come all the way through coverage and break coverage. That zone coverage just taking too long. Sell out. Tony Brown has uh, really been the guy to, to take the place of a Kelly Washington. While he hasn't produced those numbers, he's been the man that they've had to go to and now has 30 receptions this season. Here's Houston. Picks up six, seven yards to the 10-yard line. Well, Kelly Washington at home watching this football game. He was just released from a hospital yesterday, and these are his numbers. Remember, he missed the first couple of games. Then he returns and has three straight 100-yard games. And against Georgia is the game he got hurt. He had three catches for 32 yards. Total 443 yards this season, but he was uh, had uh, surgery on Tuesday. Released yesterday. We wish him the best. Like Houston driving, and that might have been good enough to pick up a first down. Justin Gibney makes the tackle. Yeah, we really wish uh, Kelly Washington well. You know, on that play that time, it, it, I think it showed Cedric Houston strength in his legs. He got hit be just about the line of scrimmage. He made a little dart, but then you saw that great leg strength to drive through and pick up that first down. Cedric Houston has battled injuries all season. Bad thigh, bad thumb, but seems to be healthy now. And running very, very oh. well. Whitney in motion. First and goal. Off sides, flag down. Looks like uh, Taluska 
defensive end probably jumped. Yeah, away from the plate, Taluska jumped in the neutral zone. But uh, for Tennessee, the decision is: Do you want uh, you want the yardage that you picked up with the run, or you want first down and five, or first down and goal, I should say. Offside on the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Down remains first down. Bobby Johnson, least penalized team in the Southeastern Conference. Had three or four of those today. So first and goal for Tennessee. Tennessee is eighth in the SEC in red zone scoring at 75%. Right there, Cedric Houston easily in, untouched. His sixth touchdown this season, and the balls have a 15-point lead. Well, this makes it look easy. Watch number 21, Houston. Goes through the line, has to jump over a little pile, but there was nobody there. The big tight end, Jason Witten. Watch him slide right there in the middle of your picture. Watch him lead. He comes out here, knocks out the outside. No penetration, and look at that hole. I'm talking about skipping through. Mm. So Tennessee will stay with their offense on the field and go for two. Make it a 17 point game. And a three score game. But the Vols will have to use a timeout as a couple of receivers look like they had a little miscommunication. That's the second timeout used by Tennessee today. Randy Sanders on the right takes the headsets off. He's the offensive coordinator. Long time Offensive coordinator since David Cutcliffe left to take over the Ole Miss program. Boy, and I thought he made two tremendous calls last week in the game that we did. That screen pass when he was on third down and had that pressure, and then that throwback to Jason Witten. Both of them went for touchdowns. They were excellent calls in that situation. Well, the Southeastern Conference uh, has seven spots available for bowl teams that they have deals with if you say and it starts in the mainstay independence bowl on december 27th and then of course there's the music city bowl right here brought to you by gaylord hotels on december 30th and it, and it runs down all the way to the bowl championship game um, that the sec is locked up in and certainly uh, georgia has to have a lot of things happen three teams in front of them in the bcs standing which they are currently fifth in right now would have to lose and uh, georgia might be able to sneak in but after Miami got a victory on Thursday night over Pittsburgh. Uh, that certainly diminished their chances, but uh, Georgia waiting for other things to happen. But Tennessee became bowl eligible last week. Now they want to keep their streak alive of going to a New Year's Day bowl. That's a goal they have. Starts here, go next week to Kentucky and see what happens. Yeah, exactly. And with the injuries they have, that they've had this year, it's been an incredible year. They're fortunate just to be bowl eligible. So going for two, Clawson fires. Put a lot of zip on it. Intended for Montrell Jones out of Louisville, Kentucky. But the Vols do get the touchdown, and they lead 15 to nothing as Cedric Houston caps off the drive. Back after a word from your local stations. In Nashville, it's Tennessee 15. Vanderbilt nothing as the Volunteers just... Had another impressive drive, kept off by that Cedric Houston touchdown. Alex Walls to kick off for Tennessee. Brandon Smith now deep to return the kick for the Vanderbilt Commodores. And we are expecting to see Benji Walker replace Jay Cutler at quarterback on this series. A high kick that's taken at the 14. Flag comes in late at the 27 yard line. Mark Jones makes another special teams tackle for Tennessee. Well, Jones is one of those guys that's yeah. just all over the field. Oh, he is. There's the hand in the back. Well, Benji Walker does come in. <laughs> Benji Walker will take over the junior out of Brentwood, Tennessee. And David hadn't been pretty offensive. No. Well, Jay Cutler with that sore hip can't deliver the football. His receivers are dropping the ball. They're not coming up and helping them. It's been a horrible first quarter for uh, Jay Cutler. 
Now, for Benji Walker, what you want to do is get a little bit mobility in the pocket. That's easy for me to say. But get a little mobility in there. Step up. Look at those wide receivers. Deliver some strikes. Move the chains. Get a first down. Benji did start a game against Middle Tennessee State when Jay Cutler was suspended. Here's the toss to Tant. Not much there. Mark Jones with the tackle. But uh, Benji was a guy that battled Cutler throughout the preseason drills for the starting quarterback job. Jay Cutler finally got the job in week one. And in his start against Middle Tennessee, he was 13 of 23 with a couple of interceptions, 107 yards. Well, David, it's, it's a good situation for Benji Walker to come into. Not a lot of pressure. Hey, your team's down. Your leading quarterback's out. Take a deep breath and find some offense. Well, that Tennessee front four, oh. the linebacking core of Mitchell, Whiteside, and Moore are dominating the line of scrimmage. Baracola is down. Well, you can add number 91, Amari Hand, to that, too. Slide to the football, get rid of blocks, blocks just kind of shed them off, and they wrap them up. When they make it to the line of scrimmage, they're not making it any farther. There's no hole there. Boy, and if, that, if that's Barracola down, that just adds to that list of uh, running backs that have been hurt for Vanderbilt. Barracola, the senior, playing in his last game, and what a story this young man has been for this team. He's a guy that uh, Dave uh, came to the school on an academic scholarship, walked on as a freshman as an offensive guard, blew out his knee, took a year off, wanted to come back on the football team, did come back as a fullback, then blew out his knee again, became a team manager. And when the coaching and the, the previous coaching staff said, we really didn't have much room for you, there's no need for you to come back out, we wanted to be a part of the program, so he was a team manager. And under the uh, new regime at Vanderbilt, Maricola decided to give it one yeah. more chance. Well. Well, and you want to talk about the uh, great leadership of this team. Bobby Johnson saw a quality, and he said, hey, I like this excitement. He wants to play. Hey, give him a chance. Buzz, you got more? Yeah, Dave, and uh, it's been that kind of year. We've heard it from both Bobby Johnson uh, and from Philip Fulmer. Juan Rojas was one of the guys that had played himself into position to back up Barracola, and he was looking to get some playing time today. This would have been a perfect opportunity. Uh, but Juan, who is from Mexico, his father passed away unexpectedly last night. Our thoughts and prayers go out to that family. So Juan Rojas left early this morning to be back with his family. And there is Quan A. Doster, uh, another guy who's having to watch this football game. And it's just, been, it's just been one after another. And with Vanderbilt, there's not a lot of depth on this club. And guys have had to battle all season long. They've only had really one game where they were blown out and were dominated from opening kickoff. And that was against Georgia. So a testament to Bobby Johnson for keeping these guys believing that they can compete. And I mean, just uh, just one more injury that can chalk up. And Zeke Brandon. Flag down on third and eight and a half, maybe nine. Yeah, I thought the wideout jumped off sides. Yes, he did. Encroachment on the offense, five yard penalty. Now remains third. And there's Barracola being attended to by this training staff. Yeah. Barra already has his yeah. degree. Great story. Great, great story. There's the pitch. Tan has plenty of room, but he's got a long way to go to get the first down. And he may be close. The first down marker is just shy of the 24. See where the mark is. Mark Jones runs him out. Well, it's a great option down the line. Watch the quarterback run down the line. Read the backer. Toss it out. They got some good blocks on the corner. They came up there and they got they got great yardage. Why didn't they do that earlier? Hey, that's a successful play. See, that's that's a play though where Doster has the speed absolutely to get you the extra two or three yards in a first down. They're going to bring the sticks in. Vanderbilt brought out Greg Johnson, the punter. But just in case, give it a good look. 
Vanderbilt just trying to get a first yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just trying to move the chains, keep the pressure off your defense. I wonder if Bobby Johnson would go for it if it's real, real short. Oh! That a boy, Bobby. Oh. Oh. Ask for that measurement. That's the way to ask for it. <laughs> he got down there and said, you know, that chain over there looks like it <laughs> might just be close. I mean, then he runs his punter out. But uh, a good call. How about that? 10 to 1 in first downs today already. We still have 9.49 to go in the second quarter. But did they find a play that will work? That little option picked up that yard. It's been the first successful play they've had. yard line. Can't normally a fullback, the freshman out of Begram, Tennessee, has moved to the tailback slot with all those injuries. Boy, Davey made a nice cut on the play. It was going to go inside. It was locked up inside. He slid outside. Now you see there's a lot of rivalry here. Look at the look at the, the lock up right there. Right in there. Look at that lock up. <laughs> Jim Bay's a senior. Yeah. He's played a lot of snaps. 41 career starts. So he wants to go out in a big way. Walker dodges one potential defender and takes it out. All right. With a 33 and a half. Be close to that first down. See where they spot it. Edward Kendrick makes the tackle for Tennessee. Well, this is nice mobility. We talked about him moving out of the pocket. And he makes a nice play out of it. Comes back there. He's got nobody open. Avoids the tackle now. Just use a little bit of race. He knows where the first down marker is. Get as much as you can. That's a good play. And another measurement coming up. I have a feeling Bobby Johnson might yep. be asking for a measurement the rest of the game. You never yeah. know. <laughs> so move the chains. For the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs, visit your local Toyota dealer today. There is Jake Cutler watching with the, uh, what is apparently a pulled muscle on the backside. And off to the up back. Clark Lee. And you know what you know what happens so many times, Dave? Your, your first team quarterback gets hurt. Everybody loses their momentum. And in runs the new fresh quarterback. And all of a sudden, the other players say, hey, I've got to step up a little bit. The blocks are a little bit crisper. The running backs are a little bit crisper. They're moving the chains. Now, Tennessee, what they need to do is they need to take this back. Bubble football. Still out there, Vanderbilt comes away with it. Get an Arkin, the right tackle. Well, this is what Tennessee does so well. They force you into mistakes. You can see the number of white shirts scrambling to the football. They were really fortunate that uh, number 70 for Vandy gets on this football, but look at the number of white shirts. They follow the ball, they're quick. Turnover is not very good for Vanderbilt this year. They're 102nd in the NCAA with a minus 12 margin. Jason Bork, first down and then some. His first carry for the Commodores today. You're talking about a guy that goes five foot seven, 180 pounds. Well, great hole. We talked about people stepping up. Look at the hole right there. He's going to go right in there and get out to the, the, the secondary. Now, break an arm tackle. A couple of great blocks there. You see Whiteside got blocked there. Hey, all of a sudden, Vandy is stepping up. But again, this is a tough Tennessee team. Look at the block on Whiteside. That's what opened up the hole. Oh, well, Bork got his introduction to Tennessee Vandy football. Loose and Tennessee has it at the 42. Well, the former world-class gymnast just uh, 
got turned upside down. Yeah, I think it was Jason Mitchell who met him. Number 35 coming through there. You want to see what it's like to run? Watch Jason Mitchell just smash him down there. Caused that fumble. Now it's a scramble for the ball. See, and that's what, that's what Tennessee does so well. They force turnovers. They're very opportunistic. Get a lot of people to the ball. That's Tennessee's 11th fumble game. Jason Bork, an intense competitor, to say the least. Upset with that turnover, and Tennessee's in business at the 42. There's a little reverse. Leonard Scott going back the other way. Gets a couple of blocks. Boston gets in the way. Leonard Scott picks up the first down. A gain of 15. He ran about 80 yards. <laughs> well, he did run. When you got speed, you can make cuts like this. I watched Hillenmeyer on the play. He's going to be over there, but watch Cloth, number seven. It's not a great block, but he gets back up in there. Boy, that's a big block. You see Clawson in there. He gets that block. Jabari Davis is the one who got the block on Hunter Hillenmeyer. Jabari Davis gets a couple. If I'm Tennessee in this situation, I want to take control of the game. Philip Fulmer knows that this is a game of momentum. It's almost a, an in-town rivalry, and he wants to get out there. You can see him. That's a gesture to his lineman. Get off the ball. Just big man on big man. Blow him off the line of scrimmage. Jabari Davis turning up some of that turf. Michigan takes a two-point halftime lead on our Ice House scoreboard. Rutgers and Notre Dame just getting started. And the Blue Devils and the Tar Heels knotted up. And in the Conference USA, Alabama-Birmingham over Louisville, 7-0. First down and 10, ball rest on the 15. Off tackle gets a yard and a half, maybe two. Jabari Davis. Antoine Morgan, a true freshman, makes the stop. Well, when you have those big linemen in front of you and you got a great pullback like Troy Fleming, hey, don't get fancy. Just keep on smack mount right up in the middle. Second down and eight. Clock ticking, approaching five minutes to go before intermission. Marty Morgan hits Jabari Davis after a gain of two. Well, that was a good stick in the middle. Andy was lucky they slid off there. Marty Morgan slid off his block, came across, and was in the hole. They, Tennessee the last two weeks, obviously, run, 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 run. From a coach's standpoint, uh, from an offensive lineman standpoint, is it easier to do that than opposed to pass protect for 50 oh. plays a game? Well, if I'm an offensive lineman, I love running. Just run the football. That's what they do best. They're all big. They're 300 pounds. You just drive them off the line of scrimmage. Here comes some pressure. Lawson lofts it up in the corner of the end zone. Incomplete, intended for Tony Brown, and never had control. It bounced off his chest when he hit the ground. Well thrown by Casey Clawson. This is just that fade to the corner of the end zone. Look at this. He looks back. The defender doesn't see the ball. Again, they were fortunate they came away with that. Vandy was, but for Tennessee, got to catch this ball. He's got it in his hands. He comes down with it. Mm. That was a well thrown ball. Oh, Alex Walls will come on to attempt the field goal from 28 yards. Kick is up, and it is good. So Alex Walls, who's been hot lately, 7 of 10 field goals overall, made 16 of his last 20, and he gives Tennessee an 18 to nothing advantage. 
Tennessee 18, Vanderbilt nothing. 4.05 to go in the second quarter from the Coliseum. A beautiful stadium. Home to the Tennessee Titans. On a what has turned out to be an absolutely gorgeous day for football. Temperatures just above 50 degrees and not a cloud in the sky. Brandon Smith takes the kickoff at the five. And takes it out to the 23-yard line. Well, we've got a good one coming up in a week. Kentucky travels to Tennessee next Saturday as Jefferson Pilot Sports brings you the SEC Game of the Week from Knoxville. The Wildcats are looking for their eighth win of the season and their first win over the Volunteers since 84, but Tennessee is looking to go out of the regular season with a win and improve their bowl possibilities. And it should be a good one, and these are two good running backs you will have a chance to see. Our two spinner went over 200 yards last week against this Kentucky team. Averaging 121 yards a game, uh, excuse me, against Vanderbilt. But he, he's a guy, Dave, that's blowing away uh, the rushing, blowing away the, the competition for the SEC rushing title this year. Absolutely tough runner. I love watching him run. E.G. Walker running a little option play. Keon Whiteside will get credit for the tackle for Tennessee. Stay tuned, coming up at halftime, we'll be highlighting the best in the SEC, presented by Don Pablos. And something tells me that this week, there might be a touchdown pass that went 19 <laughs> yards and was on fourth down and 15. You really think so? <laughs> Gosh. Boy, I don't know where you found that one. <laughs> Here's a pitch to Jason Bork. We mentioned Bork a little while ago. He walked onto the football team this spring at, he's a junior and uh, was a uh, a guy that's been very active uh, growing up as an athlete and whatnot but a world-class tumbler as a youngster and uh, also was a, uh, a successful power lifter in high school played football baseball ran track uh, only five foot seven though i gotta think he's like five six yeah that's when you stand on your tippy toes and try to get that uh, height up a little bit So Bork will get a couple. The flag is down on the play. And it appears a hold will be coming against the Commodores. Dr. Penn Wagers, the referee for the game today. It's its last game of the year. Said his crew's had a real good year. We will measure on our timeout to determine if it's going to be fourth down. This will also help in the penalty enforcement. Now, what he's saying there, Dave, is that they're going to measure if it's first down. If it's fourth down, then they'll probably take the play. If it's uh, first down, then they'll take the penalty back. Then uh, one of the good guys around. I know probably a lot of fans out there don't think these guys do a good job, but uh, there are some calls that you miss. You're only human, but for the most part, I think Bobby Gaston's crews have been pretty good this year. It's a tough game. It's been a tough, tough game to call as players get bigger and faster. So that'll be a first down according to the mark and we'll see what we're going to do with the flag. All season long you've had a chance to pick the winners during Toyota's you pick them sweepstakes. Well the points have been tallied and Terry Self from Red Bay Alabama is the grand prize winner of a new 2003 Toyota 4Runner. He beat out over 4400 sweepstakes participants in picking the winners. Shay O'Shiel is the runner up and she will receive a golf getaway weekend to Bald Head Island, North Carolina. Congratulations from Toyota. How about that? Brand new car. Give me one of those. <laughs> and how about the golf getaway? Yeah. Bald Head Island. I'm, I'm married. I have a child coming. I need a new car. A free yeah. one. But you'd probably take the golf anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I just say that publicly, but you and I know I will go to the golf he vacation. <laughs> So Tennessee took the penalty, making it third down and 12 as the ball rests on the 22. Hold against the Commodores, and Walker stands in there, scrambling, 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 looking for something, fires. Pass is caught to MJ Garrett, but Stricker was wide open at about the 45-yard line. Walker didn't see him, but, uh, or excuse me, Brandon Smith, 
makes the catch, a gain of 15. Well, what the receivers do is they get, when the quarterback gets in trouble, what you do is you start moving to an area, and you'll see them even wave their hands, hey, look at me, look at me. And fortunately, Benji Walker for Vandy, he finds him out there. He looks out in the flat, he sees him, but he got time because he rolled out of the pocket. So big first down and a big conversion for Vanderbilt. Clock's at 148 and ticking. Over the middle, looking for the tight end. Top Nick Getter down to the 29. Great catch. Keon Whiteside and Jabril Wilson bring him down. And Dave, I said to Bobby Johnson yesterday, your tight end's not a big part of the package. He said, we've got to go to him more. And Nick Getter makes a believer out of him. Coming off the line, great looking on the ball. And look at Getter's enthusiasm. A gain of 34 on the play. Sets up Vanderbilt inside the 30. Clocks at 124. Here's Bork on a handoff. Bork gets three on the play. Mitchell and Moore converge are the first ones there. And Vanderbilt looks like they will call a timeout. And Mitchell heading to that uh, Tennessee locker room. Marvin, the true freshman out of Norfolk, Virginia, got his uh, knee or ankle twisted up on a kick after a safety. And of course, last week, Rashad Baker is added to that injury list. Seven guys now defensively, seven yeah. starters defensively have missed some time, beginning with Richmond, Burnett, Simon, Neal, Veal. Uh, and then two weeks ago, it was Peace. And last week, it was Rashad Baker, who was the team leader defensively at this point. Uh, makes all the calls, had five interceptions, tied for first in the SEC. We wish him a speedy and healthy recovery as he will be out for the rest of the season. Absolutely. And then talking with Philip Fulmer, we said, you ever see a year like this? He said, never. Well, he's really going to never see a year because he's adding to the list. It is amazing. He just said, he's asked that. I've asked coaches all over the place. You ever have a year like this where you've lost what has it been 14 16 players? Now. 16 players 16 starters yeah. have missed game time uh, totaling 50 games that's incredible and there goes Barracola the fullback for Vanderbilt he has had a couple of uh, torn ACLs in his career and let's hope he doesn't have another one let's hope that's just a sprain and he'll be all right in a couple of weeks Walker gets the corner Walker gets out of bounds and a first down at the 17 and a half yard line. Mark Jones runs him out. A gain of 10 on the play. And what a difference a mobile quarterback can make. We saw Cutler couldn't run. Benji Walker can run. He's going to roll strong side, look downfield. The pass is not open. He chooses to use that leg speed. Makes a good decision there now. Get out of bounds, avoid a hit. And let me tell you what a score would mean in this situation. You've had virtually no offense. All of a sudden, you drive the length of the field. You have success. You go in at halftime. If, even if they only come away with three points, it'll be huge for Coach Kane and his group on a, the offensive coordinator. Jason Mitchell brings down Walker, and clock is at one minute. And a timeout taken by Vanderbilt. Boy, I didn't. I don't know about that play selection. No place to go. Look at Tennessee controlling that line of scrimmage, stuffing it up in there. Just nowhere for him to get around. Jason Mitchell in on the tackle. When you got to like the play of Jason Mitchell. Boy, he slides the ball well. Just a freshman. Caused the fumbles. Got a fumble recovery and already has four tackles. This Vanderbilt team, Dave, started nine freshmen, either true or redshirt, against Kentucky last week. Whew, that wow. is a young that is. team. <laughs> Some of those guys are in high school a year ago. But Vanderbilt has battled this year. I mean, they haven't had the uh, monstrous blowouts that uh, occurred last year, and they've lost some very close games. As a matter of fact, that Ole Miss Vandy game was one of the better games in the Southeastern Conference this year. They lose by six to South Carolina. They should have beaten Middle Tennessee. Uh, Middle Tennessee lose by one, and you know it's just it's just a struggle. And 
you know the Florida game when you talk to Bobby Johnson they lost that game but he said it, it was might have been a turning point because his team yep. began to believe yes. in what he was preaching they had they had a chance they had a chance to win that game they held the Gators scoreless in the second half. absolutely and when you're trying to rebuild a team you do it in elements and the first one is getting the team to buy into your program second down nine Walker Looks a couple of players inside the 10 down to the five. That'll be a first down. And the clock will stop as they move the chains. A gain of 12. Carlton Neal and Mark Jones help make the tackle. And there is Cutler watching his buddy Walker lead the charges. Well, he breaks the tackle right on the line of scrimmage by Beal. Right in there. He breaks the tackle now. Get down there. Get as many yards as you can. You want to step up in that pocket. But when you see it separate like that, take advantage of it. Four receivers, spread formation, shotgun for Benji Walker. Walker, under pressure. Walker slips a couple of defenders. Walker right out of bounds. He will lose a couple of yards. Whiteside finally chases him down, but that could have been a huge loss for Vanderbilt. Boy, one of the people that missed him was Omari Hand number 91 and you never see him left side of your screen watch him come in there he's got him right there he never misses tackles oh boy we'll run the line of scrimmage get outside get out of bounds pick up yardage keep the momentum i'll tell you benji walker stepped up but hand you never see him when he gets those arms on him and he wraps you up you're down senior out of tallahassee florida is omar hand and ted kane trying to call a play that'll put him in the end zone Play clock down to two, and I don't know if they got oh. it off. That was very close. It'll be a delay of game. That's oh. a, you just can't have that. Oh, game. that's a killer because Prior it's five snap. yards. Delay of game on the offense. Five yeah. yard penalty. Down remain second. The clock stops. He runs out of bounds. Yep. You got time to get the troops. You, you, you know there's not much yep. time. You can't afford that. No, you can't. But what happened on the play, he had motion on the play, and he had to wait for the motion to go across behind the back of the center. Now, if you know what I'd do, if I'm Benji Walker, I'd look for number 85, Dan Stricker. He's Second and goal for the 14. Andy has gone backwards since Walker had him at the five. Pressure again. This time, Walker can't get out, but a face mask possibly coming. Amari Hand got the sack. And well, Hand a little bit upset about the one he missed, but in his exuberance, he may have gotten a hand in the face mask. See if you see it here. Oh, you know what? That may be the big one because he used it to tackle it. You know, the difference, Dave, is, of course, the, the inadvertent one where you just put the hand on there, but when you use it to tackle, that's the big one. Well, that moves him from the 14 to the 7. Gives him a first down. But the clock is 20 seconds. Sitting on 20, and it's moving. Vandy better hurry. They have a timeout left. Man, I take it early. I don't wait like this. It's at nine. It's at seven. Cutler fires. Clock stops with one second. Now that is a mistake. You take that time out. You've got two or three plays. You've got first down. Now all they have is a field goal try. You take that time out. Why not take it? Again, Dan Stricker, that would be the one I would go to, but they have kept Stricker, Tennessee has kept Stricker out of this ball game. So Johnson to attempt a 24-yard field goal. Last play of the half is no good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 18-0 Tennessee. Let's check in with Buzz. Coach, they were able to get some yardage on that last drive. You kept them off the scoreboard, though. That was a big, big deal to, to keep them off the scoreboard. They, we gave up a couple third down plays that we shouldn't have, and obviously had them stop before the penalty. But 
they're doing a little bit of what they want to do in keeping the ball away from us more than we like at that last drive. I think if we can keep the ball away from them a little bit and go ahead and score and hopefully put it away. You wanted to keep Casey out of bad spots, and your offensive line has enabled you to do that. We've done a good job of that so far. Yeah. All right, thanks, Coach. Best of luck in the second half. That's Philip Fulmer. His Vols dodged the proverbial bullet at the end of the half. They keep Vandy off the scoreboard. It's 18-0 Tennessee at the half. Back with more. For some football as Tennessee leads Vanderbilt. Let's check in with Dave on the sidelines. Bobby, you got that good drive going at the end of the half and just couldn't get any points out of it. Well, we uh, hoping to get seven right then. We sure needed at least a three, and that hurt when we missed the field goal. But, you know, our guys, I think, gained a little bit of confidence that we can move the ball. Uh, we're down to nubs right now, and, uh, you know, our guys are trying hard, and we're going to try to move the ball today. You're already shorthanded on the offensive side with Quante not being in there. Jay Hurts is back, but Benji came in and played well for Benji you. Benji played well, uh, you know, moved around in the pocket, made some big plays on some scrambles, and uh, has done a good job of checking out of some bad plays. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank Best you. of luck second right. half. That's Bobby Johnson, Dave. All right, Buzz. We are underway in the second half. Leonard Scott takes the kickoff, gets... To about the 18-yard line, 19-yard line. And that's where the Volunteers will take over. Nick Lyle makes that special teams tackle. Well, Dave Rowe, as Casey Clausen comes back out, uh, how much longer do you go I mean, in terms of uh, making sure he's available next week? Well, I think you play through the third quarter with him. He's got a good bounce. He hasn't been any, uh, under any pressure. He hasn't had to run where he's really had to stretch that ankle. So I look for him to play into the fourth quarter. Philip Fulmer said as long as his quarterback is being protected, he will let him go out there. Wooden in motion. The offensive line has done a nice job today. I don't know the case he's even hit the deck. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Tony Brown in the first half. Casey Clausen was 5 of 9, 45 yards. Meanwhile, Cutler was 1 of 5. Benji Walker, 2 of 3. For the Commodores. And Dave, I was going to make an interesting, uh, just a, a comment on Casey's injury as compared to Cutler. Casey's is on that right ankle, and that's the one that you plan off as you push. Cutler's is in that hip area on the left leg. That's where you land. Both of them serious injuries. Dylan Meyer tried to strip the football, almost got it, but the strength of Cedric Houston kept it Tennessee football. Boy, you're exactly right. When you're a running back, the one thing you got to do is hold on when you come in contact. Look at the rip trying to pull that ball out there. But these Tennessee players are well taught. Keep that elbow down, lock that ball in, don't let it get pulled out. Hunter Hillenmeyer in the middle for Vanderbilt, having a bunch of tackles. He's now has eight tackles today. Or nine, give him nine total tackles. Here's Witt, near side. Look at the big tight end. Dodge a couple of players. Justin Gibbony finally brings him down after the gain of 11. And Dave, by making a miss, he made the first down. He moves the chain. If he had gotten tackled where he had that first contact, he wouldn't have made the first down. Heads up play by him. Gibbony, the senior, making his last stand as a Commodore. Second on the team in tackles with 126. He had a career-high 19 tackles against Florida a few weeks back. Boston goes up tight, up top with a tight spiral, and nearly picked off. Dominique Morris had his hands on the football, but a flag is down at about the 36-yard line. Boy, if you ever want to come down with a ball, Dominic Morris has got to catch this ball, but there is a flag. Looks like it's going against Tennessee. Morris had it right in his hands. Then wagers our referee today. Talking to the Vanderbilt players of what they want to do. And they will back him up, it appears. Pass interference on the offense, 15-yard penalty. Down remains first down. I wonder. I wonder when you go back to talk to the Vanderbilt players uh, about a penalty like that, if they start to analyze it for you. <laughs> well, the great intelligence. You see, there was the hand on the back. That may have been what it was—the hand on the back by the receiver. But uh, Mars should have come down with that. Now the pressure's on Casey Clawson a little bit. 
first and 25. Swing it out. Lawson overthrows his intended target as Cedric Houston runs right into Gibbony. Two of them collide. Well, you know what? When Gibbony came up there that time, the ball's clearly missed. I thought for a second that may be a penalty because you can't hit him after the ball. Watch the ball's clearly missed there. Now watch Gibbony. Comes up and makes contact, I think. <laughs> but he fell down, so maybe that's yeah. why they didn't call it. Gibbony out of Inglewood, Colorado. Said he'll probably sit at home tomorrow, watch some football, and then head home for the holidays. Boston has plenty of time. Fires to a wide open target. Well shy of the first down is Tony Brown. Well, Tony Brown makes an excellent catch. It's, it's helped because he has time. Look at you see Brown come all the way across the field here. Nobody near him. He runs in between that short and that deep zone. Zone coverage, you gotta come up if you're the safety. You gotta come up when you see that man running wide open in that zone, you gotta come up on him. Third down and eight. Lawson. First down. Catch is made at the 44 and a half yard line, and that'll move the chains. Boy, Casey Clawson had plenty of time. Yeah, great protection. His back step up, they make good contact. Then he just rifles it out there and finds Jones out there in the in the little curl zone. But you gotta credit that offensive line and Fleming. You see Fleming there? He's the one who stepped up and got the backer right smacked in the hole. Those guys up front, Munoz, Wells, Herrera, Offenhusel, Respert, all been very good today. Cedric Houston, it's about three on the play, Hillenmeyer, and Ralph McKenzie, and he'll make the tackle. Hunter Hillenmeyer, first time last week he's been held without double-figure tackles this season. He had nine against Kentucky. Played in every game of his Vanderbilt career, which is coming to a close today, and honored earlier this year as one of six recipients of the uh, NCAA Academic Award. I mean, when you think about being the best of the best yeah. as a student athlete, that's pretty impressive. Pass is caught. Montrell Jones. Millenmeyer wanted to fumble, didn't get it. It'll be first down Tennessee. But uh, just to finish up that story, there are three SEC athletes that are in that uh, on that student athlete award list from the NCAA, and Hunter's one of them. Yeah, great, uh, great story on him. Good catch there by Jones. Come on that little dart coming inside. But you're right. I like uh, I like Hunter Hill and Meyer. I've always admired him. Move from outside to inside. Not really that big at 240, but he plays tough. Cedric Houston. We could get that graphic back up. I, I just want to talk about this because it's a very uh, certainly special award. Hunter Hillenmeyer was uh, uh, given the award before a game today here in front of some of his uh, family and friends. And uh, Brady James and John Stinchcomb, also of the Southeastern Conference. Those are the six best student athletes on the football field right there, voted, uh, voted on. Uh, by those in the know, and uh, that's a, an admirable job. Well, it says a lot. It says a lot of your conference when you've got three of the six. Houston now up over a hundred yards again. His fourth consecutive game over a hundred. Pass is caught. Leonard Scott this time makes the tackle. Dominic Morris, uh, or I should say, Scott makes the catch. Morris makes the tackle. Now Morris is getting a good education out there. Number 10 is playing corner. He's just a red shirt freshman. Bobby Jones, I mean Bobby Johnson turned around and said, hey, we've got to get these freshmen experience. We've got to get them time out there to play. On first and 10, Edward Houston again. This is the drive Philip Fulmer wanted, as he told Buzz on the way to the locker room. We need a drive that's going to just chew up some of this clock and keep Vandy off the football field. 
The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Pass is caught. That'll be yard shy, the first down. Dominic Morris, Leonard Scott, those two getting to know each other quite well. Exactly. When you're a redshirt freshman and you're playing against Tennessee, you get a lot of opportunities. Let's check in with Buzz. Oh, Dave, unlike these other drives, this has been almost exclusively pass, and there's been so much concentration on the running game in Tennessee the last month. I think Philip Fulmer's making a concerted effort to see if he can work some of the rust out of his aerial game. And I think he also, Buzz, feels like Casey Clausen is healthy enough to do it. Yep. There goes Cedric Houston. He keeps preaching balance, balance, balance. But Buzz, you're down there. How is Casey moving around? I mean, does he look like uh, he's vulnerable? I remember you had a conversation earlier this week with Philip Fulmer about a quarterback being hurt. Yeah, that's true, Dave. You want to be able to protect yourself. That's what Philip Fulmer said. And what he's done, if you notice what they're doing with Casey, they're just doing real quick two and three step drops. There was one time in the first half when he had to roll out, kind of threw off balance and was really favoring a little bit. I don't think he wants anything to do with getting in a pile or taking a hit. <laughs> I don't blame him. I don't think he ever did. To the corner of the end zone, incomplete. Montrell Jones, the intended target. Morris on the coverage. Boy, Tennessee going after Morris. Yes, they are. They want no part of Russian Jones on the other side of the field, who's getting a little lonely over there. Well, you see a freshman out there, you know he's new in there, you go after him. You know, when I watch Casey Clawson out there, I've been looking for him to limp. I've been looking for him not to go through the mechanics. And I think Buzz makes an interesting observation. You want to make sure that he's got it all back because there's no speed like game speed and everything happens so quickly. Tinsley in motion. Lawson with a nice quick drop again. Here's some pressure. Now we get to see him move around. The first time all day he's had to do it and nearly threw an interception. And Hunter Hillenmeyer had the interception. But look at Clawson. I mean, he's moving around the pocket, getting a little bit of mobility. Watch this. A lot of time to start. Now he steps up to throw, and now he's got a backup. And look at him just get out of pro get out of trouble. Again, step up, come around a block or two, make people miss. But Hunter Hillenmeyer had that interception. He just and Clawson just goes. Thankfully, he didn't catch it. Looks like he's got a boot on that yeah. right foot. It actually looks like almost like a like a brace. Third down and ten. Clawson under pressure again. This time he's set. Guess who? Hunter Hillenmeyer. For Hunter. That is his 13th tackle today. Well, Michael Munoz, who's the left tackle, he locks up on his. Look at big 77 right in there. You see him, he's locked up, forced him outside. But you see Hillenmeyer, he's in the backfield, disrupting the pass pattern, getting in that pocket, collapsing it. I thought he was going to take you on down there at the start of the game. <laughs> Remember? I wanted to. <laughs> he was. A 33-yard field goal coming from Alex Walls. It is up and good. And Alex is 2 of 2 today from 28 and now 33. Well, the Vols have extended their lead to three touchdowns. 21 to nothing. Back after this. The opening drive for Tennessee of the third quarter results in a field goal, but eight up a lot of that clock. 7.26 to go here in the third period. 21 nothing. Tennessee leads. Ball's about to kick off and 7.34 off the clock. Wow. Huh. <laughs> the only thing wrong on that is that uh, for Tennessee, it didn't uh, end up with seven points. Here's Brandon Smith to the 25, and that's where he will stop. But Tennessee's defense, other than that last drive of the half, uh, been pretty impressive today. Well, impressive with big hits. I mean, they come back to the football and they strike you. And they get to the ball, too. That's another thing. You get a lot of white shirts to the ball. Anytime you can move to the ball and get that many people around it on tackles, you're not going to pick up many yards. Again, a huge hit. Their defense has really played well. Not allowed Vanderbilt to get into the secondary. Not allowed them to pick up 
the big yardage other than that getter catch by the tight end. That pretty much tells the story today. 270 to 110 in total yards. Here's Bork. As a matter of fact, 73 of the Vanderbilt's 110 yards of offense came on their last drive before halftime. Veal makes that tackle. Well, Vanderbilt on this series, you've made your adjustments at halftime. Now see how they feel they can attack Tennessee. Tennessee makes their adjustments. Their results where they came down the field with a score. Now can Vandy do the same thing? Four wide receivers. Walker's pass intended for Stricker. Stricker came in needing a little over 90 yards to set Vanderbilt's all-time receiving yard record, and he needed about 150 to break the SEC mark held by Josh Reed, but it doesn't appear that uh, he'll get those today unless he has one of his biggest halves of all time. <laughs> But his 21 TDs is a school record and will finish uh, certainly in the top 10 in, in almost every receiving category in the Southeastern Conference when his career is over at the end of today. Boy, Walker's pass nearly picked off, intended for Stricker. Wilson came up and had his hands on it. Boy, he did. Wilson playing that free safety, strong safety position, I should say. He just read the quarterback's eyes. When he threw it, he broke on the ball and was right there, almost intercepted it. Again, you read that quarterback. Look at number eight come in there. You see him just go for the football. Excellent play. And he gives him a little tap. Uh, <laughs> Stricker gets a little tap down there. Just you ain't going to catch it. A lot of attention pay, played uh, towards Dan Stricker and his abilities. Mark Jones back to return the punt of Johnson. It's a good kick. Nice tight spiral. Bounces at the 32. It takes a big Vanderbilt roll. It'll be down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. So Greg Johnson bidding for All-American freshman honors with a 54-yard kick. Well, Vanderbilt's final four opponents that they have played have a record of 31 and 13 combined. Their last five SEC teams combined for a 41 and 14 record. But look at the, what they're doing today, and that is they're throwing the ball a lot more than they did last week against Mississippi State. Cedric Houston with a nice game. Close to the first down. Give him 11 on the carry. Our Chick-fil-A nugget of today's game. Winningest active coaches in Division 1A. Well, Bob Pruitt of Marshall has slid up there to the top spot, winning 85% of the time. But Philip Fulmer, almost 81%, and that includes this season where they're 6-4. and four. Bobby Bowden. On the offense, not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Now remains first. Bobby Bowden on that list is third. And your guy, Joe Paterno. Yep. Gets in there. At number five. Yeah. You were there for that first win, weren't you? Yeah, I sure was. That, uh, 1966. Where were you, buddy? What what time of the year was that? <laughs> it was, uh, let's see, it was first game. Okay. I was uh, uh, September. September. I was uh, three months away from being born. That's right. Today's your birthday. No, yesterday was your birthday. Nowhere to go. I had to call my mom last night and remind her to wish me a happy birthday. Well, I thought what's even worse was that uh, Mary Margaret, your new wife, wished you happy birthday when you left and didn't. That was it. <laughs> I, mean, I had to call her, too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a whole lot of birthday Golly. wishes yesterday. Where's the disappoint. love? Where's the love? Not around me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, we're in trouble anyway, now. Yeah. I think I opened up that can. Yeah, right. thank you, buddy. <laughs> Lawson to throw over the middle to Witten. Pass is caught. He's wrestled down at the 24-yard line by Pat Bruner. It's about six yards shy of the first down. Yeah, the Vanderbilt stops the run. See in the last five losses, the, the yardage. Boy, that's a, that's a lot of yards run up there. I mean, that just tells you that they got to get off the line of scrimmage. They've got to they've got to shed blocks. They've got to be able to move over there. Got to get penetration. And they're in a defense where they just don't blitz a whole lot with the outside edges. 
Fleming drops it. High pass. That'll bring up fourth down. And that's just a drop by Clawson because Clawson had no pressure on him. Just stand back there and look. So the Vanderbilt defense makes a stand, and they should have pretty good field position. Yeah. After the punt, Dustin Colquitt back to punt for Tennessee. Well, you know what has to be Phil Fulmer's concern is, hey, you've dominated this football game, but you're only three scores up. I mean, that's not complete control. That ball might have been blocked. That ball might have been hit, and it rolls out of bounds right near midfield. So pressure coming from the Commodores. Brandon Waltower might have been the guy to get uh, his hand on it. A 28-yard kick. And as we go to break, let's... And that was tapped, according to Penn Wagers. So Vandy has it. We'll return after a word from your local stations. 20 to go. Here in the third quarter, the Commodores just uh, blocked a punt and have it at midfield. Benji Walker steps up, fires, has MJ Garrett inside the 40 to the 35, first down. Boy, good pattern on that, good read by your quarterback, confidence in your receiver going to catch it. All the elements you want, drop back, three-step drop, you get back there, plant, find Garrett on that crossing pattern, it was a well-executed play. G. Walker, junior out of Brentwood, Tennessee. Looking for Stricker and can't hold on to it. Dan having a tough afternoon of it. Let's check in with Buzz. You know, Dave, the, the great coaches do what they have to do to get the most out of their team, and you got to give John Chavis credit for that with that injury-riddled defense this year. After the first half of the Florida game, he didn't like what he saw from his guys, so he moved down from the press box to the field. It was successful, and he's been there ever since, and he's really gotten good results, and it's important to be down here, especially when you're having to put so many different guys in different spots. Absolutely right. Here's Lorenzo Parker, the cornerback, who we were told by the coaches would get some action today. They just uh, basically brought him over to uh, the offense this week and tossed him the football and said, run. Yeah. And he said he's had pretty good quickness, good vision, and uh, they'll have some, some, some simple things that they want to do with him. And they'll certainly try to keep him out of there when it's time to pass block yeah. because picking up protection is difficult. Yeah, very difficult on that uh, blitz pickup. Jason Bork now the tailback. Hand off to the fullback Tan. Tan nowhere to go. Corey Larkins in on the tackle. Pizza Hut scoreboard. Ooh, and moved in the wow. fourth quarter. Michigan over Ohio State 9 to 7. That'd be good news for the Georgia Bulldogs. Notre Dame over Rutgers 14 to nothing in the second. The Tar Heels over Duke in the fourth. And Louisville up by 10 over UAB. That's our Pizza Hut scoreboard. Mandy going for it on fourth and seven. Trying to set up Dan Stricker and that didn't work very well. Pressure came and that'll turn it over to Tennessee. Yeah, it's awfully hard to throw off your back leg. The pressure that time, Wilson in hand. Watch number eight, watch 91 come in there. No way you can throw it. You just can't get anything on the ball when you're dancing back there trying to avoid people. No delivery. Pretty discouraged quarterback right there. Thought he had a little drive going. They got great field position. Now they have to give it back. Casey Clausen comes in, 12 of 21, 120 yards. Remember last week, this Tennessee team only threw it eight times and ran it 64. They run it here with plenty of room for Derek Tinsley, the sophomore out of Marietta, Georgia. Next week, we wrap up our coverage here on Jefferson Pilot Sports as the Wildcats will travel to Knoxville as the Volunteers and Kentucky wrap up the season. It's the first time in a long time that Tennessee hasn't ended the season with Vanderbilt with the schedule changes this year. 
Kentucky and Tennessee will put a wrap on it, and it should be a good one. 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. Hope you can join us next Saturday from Knoxville. Yeah, that uh, picture on the left-hand side, Jared Lorenzen. He is a great equalizer in any football game. The toss to Tinsley. It's a couple of yards. Vanderbilt did a nice job on Lorenzen last week. Held him to one of his worst games of his career. Actually, uh, it wasn't Lorenzen that beat him. No. And the week before, they did a number on Grossman. So this uh, this this Bobby Johnson defense uh, has given up a lot of yards. Here's what they did against those two guys. That's I mean, no TDs among those two quarterbacks, and that's saying something. Well, 128 yards. That's not much for Jared Lorenzo. Tinsley. Well, you get in a situation like this, third quarter's running down, just run that football, control the line of scrimmage, blow them off. You know Vandy's got to be tired. You see them standing in the huddle. They got their hands up on their hips, and Philip Fulmer knows that. He's an old offensive guard. He knows when you get tired. Under a minute to go before the third quarter is wrapped up. It has been all Tennessee in terms of time of possession today. But Vanderbilt's defense has been up to the task lately. Hunter Hillenmeyer is a little slow to get up right around midfield, and he's holding his right hand. Yeah, yeah I saw him grab his arm on the play. He went down awkwardly and right away grabbed his arm. See if we can see number 47 on this run. Maybe to the outside, it goes away from us. Hillenmeyer's 47, slides to the football. See him at the top of the screen. When he comes down right there, he comes down on that right arm or shoulder. And you see him in the pile, see him coming up. Here he is again, slides underneath the block now, trying to get to it. Happened on the tail end of the tackle when he came in here. Just did not see exactly where he went down, but uh, a lot of concern. Plays with a lot of heart. 14 tackles today, also has a sack. Leads the Southeastern Conference in tackles per game. <laughs> Buzz will certainly get an update. Football fans, you can register to win a million dollars in the Bell South Million Dollar Kick Contest. Visit jpsports.com to register and check out the schedule for the Bell South E-Zone rolling on to college campuses around the South. Sign up and then start practicing your field goals. The grand prize winner gets a chance to kick for one million dollars at the 2002 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl game on New Year's Eve as Hunter Hillenmeyer gets a standing ovation from the Vandy fans as he exits the field. Well, it's fourth and two in Tennessee who will punt. High spiral. Eric Davis lets it bounce at the five. We saw Colk would do that last week at Mississippi State. Sent one down to the one-yard line and bounced back a yard and then stopped. But a flag is down at the 25-yard line. But this guy's amazing oh. with his ability to punt it inside the 10-yard line. Well, I played with one of the great punters of all time, Ray Guy, and if you can get that nose of the ball over, where it lands in that nose, it doesn't usually bounce, continue bouncing. It just kind of, like a divot shot, just kind of digs in and bounces back. Here comes Penn Wagers. After the play, personal foul on the iPad. Half the distance to the goal. Touchdown. Well, when it's going bad, it's going bad. Yeah, that's frustration right there. And you see, when you see that, and Philip Palmer knows that. Dustin Colquitt, sophomore to Knoxville, Tennessee, son of a former ball punter. Keeps a tradition going in his family and stands in there nicely after just having one block and he got taken to the ground but his ability to put that uh, put that toe of the ball in the right spot yeah, get that nose over there's Tant Brill Wilson runs him out of bounds after a gain of six 
Vandy, Vandy has backed up. Has had bad field position all game for the most part, but there's Hunter Hillenmeyer. Yeah, it looks like it's an elbow. They've come down and banged the bottom of that elbow. But he's moving it. You know what? I think he comes back. That's the kind of kid he is. Gets a chance to play. Always dreamed about being a Commodore. He will earn a double major before he's done. And Vanderbilt. And that should be the last play of the third quarter. But Hillenmeyer will get degrees in economics and human and organizational development. And will no doubt be a three-time All-SEC Academic Honor Roll selection when it's over with a 3.8 GPA. And he's leading the league in tackles. It's all Tennessee, 21 to nothing in Nashville. The Vols trying to keep the streak alive against their counterparts in Nashville. We'll return after a message from the fans auto parts. Tennessee leading Vanderbilt 21 to nothing. Dave, I mentioned it earlier. What a stretch for this Vanderbilt team. Their last four opponents have a combined record of 31 and 13. Their last five SEC opponents are 41 and 14. That's a tough stretch oh, that to finish. That is a tough stretch. That's a really tough stretch. But again, you build a team and you change the complexion of a team in segments. And Bobby Johnson's made a believer out of me with his team. He, you see a lot of the right things going on. Well, they just went with Tan trying to pick up the first down, couldn't get it, and here comes the punt team. Now, see, I'm a gambler. I'd go for it. Fourth down, what have I got to lose? I'd just go for it. Another measurement. Hey, wait a minute. Well, you've been successful That's a couple right. of times. Why not give it another shot? Well, or see how far it is. Fourth and inches. Here's our third quarter Gatorade stats. Look at the time of possession. 27-46 for Tennessee. 17-14 for Vanderbilt. Wow. Well, and you control the ball when you're making first downs and you're moving the chains and, and you're running the football. Vanderbilt has, has had a lot of series of three and out, three and out. Those are quick turnovers. Johnson back at his goal line. It's a big punt, and it's taken by the up-back Tant. Matthew Tant out to the 46-yard line on a fake punt. Executed perfectly. Stephen Marsh finally brings him down. A gain of 37. Well, I said I'd go for it, but uh, I didn't think it would go that way. Snap to the fullback, good blocks up front, and he just burst through there. Tennessee caught off guard, and that's something a lot of times you see Philip Fulmer do, those fakes and uh, on field goals and things like that. First and ten, Commodores. Jason Bork, the lone setback. Walker to throw, passes... Caught by Dan Stricker. Bounced around like a pinball. Julian Battle made the big hit, his first catch this afternoon. Boy, and it's a good to see him. He just didn't, didn't catch it clean, but boy, did he get stuck. I mean, Julian Battle came in there and just leveled him. Watch number 14. Boom. That's the way you put him down. How do you hold on to that? Wow. Great concentration. <laughs> For Stricker, his 43rd catch this season, had back-to-back -back 60 catch seasons. Here's Tan, right behind the center. Well, Dave, interesting on that fake punt. When you have everybody on the line of scrimmage and you break it, he's into the secondary right away. They had 10 men up on the line of scrimmage. Now the only person back is just the receiver. They pick up huge yardage. Hey, that could be a key play. And again, we talk about the score. It's 21 to nothing. That's not out of reach. Here's the option. It is shut down in a hurry from Dickerson. And that is a uh, another good young defensive lineman. Loss of three. That is a huge play. Watch number 90 in there. Does a swim move. Gets in the backfield. Tackles the quarterback. You talk about outstanding. That is a big league move. You don't think John Chavis, he came over and just 
kind of looked at him and went, wow, what a move. Through all these injuries, they're third in total defense. 306 yards per game are the balls giving up. For the option, only four option plays, and that's because of the lack of a true tailback to run it. The guy with speed. And pass is incomplete. Quane Doster on the sidelines watching. He's their true freshman who was uh, third team, but they lose, uh, you know, you, you lose Nor uh, Norval McKenzie, the running back. Then you lose Hatcher who was another starting tailback to broken legs. That means the true freshman, Quane Doster, has to get thrown into the starting role, and he responded, but after that, I mean, yeah. how, not many teams have four not SEC not. caliber tailbacks. Exactly. Doster actually thought he might redshirt this year in the beginning of the year. I know he's one of your favorite players. I know how much you like to watch him run. I think he's got a bright future. Walker under pressure, pump fakes, and gets by him. One defender still on his feet, popped out of bounds, about six yards shy of a first down. Julian Battle ran him out of bounds. Well, you can't make a mistake if you're a defensive lineman. When a quarterback pump fakes, you don't go for the fake. Watch on the tail end of this play. What he does is he fake pumps, and you see the defender go up high for it. That's Dickerson. He learned a little lesson on that. Don't go for the fake. Another fourth down coming, fourth and eight. Ball rests on the 40. Harvey Johnson has nothing to lose in the season finale, down three touchdowns. Watch it. Pressure coming, it's picked up. Cutler fires, pass is caught, but is it enough? Oh, that is going to be very close. Oh. Tennessee says that he didn't make it, but what a throw, what a catch. Great concentration in there. Dan Stricker, not a lot of time to sit back here, but throw that ball and watch Stricker look this ball in. Low concentration, it bobbled a little bit, but he came up with a catch. Now is it enough for a first down? Well, this is gonna be close. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I don't think so, no. yard. Well, and Philip Fulmer's got to be happy. His defense has really responded today. When they have had to, they come up with big plays. You know, when you talked about John Chavis being down on the sideline, you go down on the sideline when all your guys are young, and you got to look them in the face and make changes. See who's who's scared, who's not. But Hunter Hillenmeyer, one guy had been scared his whole career, comes back, has that right arm taped up. Dylan Meyer with 14 tackles and a sack. Report from Buzz is a hyperextended right elbow. Casey Clawson also in under center for Tennessee. And off goes to Cedric Houston. Hunter Hillenmeyer Dave is uh, closing out his career in fine fashion today. Well, it's been a bright day for him. He's one of the bright spots. It's no sin to be blocked if you're a middle linebacker, but you don't stay blocked. You get to the football, then you make the big plays when you react back. And Hillenmeyer has done that. He's had a, that one right there was a huge play on that short yardage. Then he makes tackles out in the flat. He's got plays with great emotion. And he's just the kind of player that you just love. Tremendous academian, you know, with the, the smarts and uh, moves to the football well. Son of Henry and Sally Hillenmeyer. I'm sure they're proud parents today. Gibbity. Wrestles Houston to the ground. That'll bring up third down and five. There's what Hillenmeyer has done today. Two tackles for loss included in that is a sack. Bam Hardman of Florida would need uh, just, we're figuring about 20 tackles or so to against Florida State to overtake Hillenmeyer for the SEC tackle lead. Tennessee 0 for 3 on their last third down conversion. 7 of 10 overall. You know, I'm a little bit surprised to see Casey Clawson still in here. I mean, we're late in this football game, and I think that, uh, you know, you've been able to avoid him getting hurt. I think we may have seen the last of him. That's who I think we may see. James Banks, the quarterback, freshman. James, 3 of 8 last week, throwing the football for 90 yards. Did have a touchdown pass. 
but did his job, and that was not screw it up. That's exactly right. <laughs> Let the others win the yeah. football game for us. You just get him in the right spot. Davis back to return. The Colt would punt. It's a high kick. Davis takes it at the eight. He knows what Colt can do with the punt, so he fields it and drops it. I think Vandy got it back at the ten. Wait to see what the yeah. decision is. They're going to give it to uh, Vanderbilt, obviously, and ball start against Tennessee after the 52-yard punt, and they may make Tennessee re-kick it, and I wouldn't blame them. I think, I think that's a good yeah. idea. I mean, heck, you're down sure. there at the 11. Why not? Sure. If that, in fact, is what the call is, then sure, make them punt it because the uh, you can't have the worst field position than inside the 10 Illegal yard line. Illegal formation on the kicking team. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Replay fourth down. Philip Fulmer trying to figure out what that was all about. Tennessee, eight in the league in penalties. Well, you see everyone released to the outside. A lot of times those outside ones just kind of lean back to try and get a good blocking angle. Now, when you start thinking about punt block, you don't think about returning it. The Vandy was fortunate to come up with that. They were fortunate to recover that. Jason Bork recovered the fumble. Now see what the difference in the penalty would have been. Would have been at, what, the 10-yard line? Davis back there again. Colquitt stands at the 21. High kick. Davis will take it at the 15. Not much help from his blockers as Vandy tried to block the punt. He fumbled again. They'll say he's down at the 15. So they gained five yards, and now Davis has a headache. <laughs> That's exactly what he's got. He got a headache on the play. He's wondering why did we do that? <laughs> 50 yard kick back to Nashville after this. Tennessee continues to lead by three touchdowns. Vandy has the football at the 15 yard line. Just over 10 minutes to play in the football game from the Coliseum in Nashville, formerly Adelphia Coliseum. Walker to throw. Lofts it up, looking for Stricker, who has to be a defensive back, and it's picked off by Mark Jones, his first interception this season. The junior out of Walling, Ford, Pennsylvania, who has got a starting role today because of the injury to Rashad Baker, who led the team with five interceptions. Well, number 10, Mark Jones, just zeroes in on the quarterback, just keeps on coming over and over and looking at the quarterback. Looking. He's the only one that's there, and as you said, Stricker's got to be a defensive back. But Jones just playing those eyes. Again, look at him just lining up, finding the ball. You can't throw that deep on Tennessee because they're great defensive backs. They've got set the speed to react. Jones, 5'9", 185. Not a big safety, certainly. And there is the man we thought would be the next quarterback. James Banks, 6'3", 195-pound freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana, the true freshman. Loose football. Jabari Davis falls on it. Well, we were wondering what happened to Buzz, and now we know. He found himself a special guest. Buzz, what do you got? Absolutely, Dave. The uh, injury situation is extended to the uh, extended Tennessee family. Sterling Marlin is here. Sterling was leading in the points race in the Winston Cup Series when you had that action. How are you feeling? I feel real good. We uh, pretty sore at Richmond in uh, about two or three weeks and went to Kansas and got caught up another wreck. And, and uh, when we got MRI, I had to crack, crack the vertebrae. So uh, just kind of hanging out. <laughs> Been, had his first ball game this year, but been all the races trying to you know, keep up with what's going on, and uh, we're looking forward to get back in the you know, cools like Dodge next year, and uh, you know try to pick up where we left off. All right, hang on just a second. We'll come back more in a second after. Banks completes the pass, Buzz, to Tony Brown. Banks. Let's go back to Buzz. All right, Dave, we appreciate it. Now, Sterling, in terms of rehab, can you can you do anything at all, or is it just rest or what? It's just rest, pretty much. Uh, you know, had a crack in the in the C2 vertebrae and. Uh, it's just about healed up and going back next uh, next week to get some more x-rays. Went a couple weeks ago and it's almost healed and uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll here pretty quick. And you've uh, driven a couple of Tennessee cars out there in the circuit. Yeah, we did. We had a big time of the year. Uh, I drove the Tennessee car, drove four races in Tennessee and uh, 
had a big time with it, and I've still got the car at the house, so uh, I'm going to keep it for a while. <laughs> Sterling, thanks a bunch. Thank All right, thank you. Luck. All right, take care. Sterling Marlin. Thanks, Buzz. I wonder if he drives it around the neighborhood. I need a car. Banks gets tackled at the 40 by Hunter Hillenmeyer, who now has 15 tackles. But, you know, I mentioned I need a free car. You are really desperate for this car. And that car. would be a great one. <laughs> Let's watch Hunter, who yeah. uh, certainly is uh, a guy that's going to go with an eight-cylinder engine today. Yeah, he's got a good motor. He runs the line of scrimmage, and when that quarterback gets to the turn, when he gets to the turn, you get in on the tackle, and you get him to pull up. But you love his range of motion. Uh, I've told you many times, I like his enthusiasm. I like the way he plays. Not great on size. He's not a typical middle linebacker size-wise, but uh, plays with a great heart. Nice run from Cedric Houston. Let's go back to bus. Dave, I've heard a lot about this car situation this afternoon. The only thing you need to remember is you need a car seat. You won't have any trouble finding a fine minivan to drive for the rest of your adult career, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Some people might think that you're talking about that I need the car seat, the car seat personally. No. No, no, no. <laughs> a few months from now you need it. Yeah, his days of being in the uh, Dave, in those Dave, Dave, you've gotten me in enough trouble as <laughs> today. Let's just stop. Stop. I was going to say you're going to a station wagon. <laughs> Houston again. This time he powers his way to the 22-yard line. Another 10-yard gain. Gibbity makes the tackle. Boy, Houston now up to 136 yards this afternoon. He had a career high 149 last week, four straight 100 yard games. When we talked about durability, when you carry the ball 30 times, and we talked with Philip Fulmer about it, he says he just seemed to get stronger. And when they watched that number of carries, and he just never let up. Here's Banks. Gets a good block and gets the corner, and then gets laid into by Marty Morgan. But Hillenmeyer was the first man there, and then Morgan came in and really put a shot on him. Well, you see the lead right there, Houston lead. He's got to get that block right there. Just zero, run right through him. You see 47 come in there, good range. It's clipped in the face there. That was a good hit there by Marty, Marty Morgan coming up. But now, just keep the clock going. If you're Philip Fulmer, hey, you just want to keep running the ball. Here's Cedric Houston, nowhere to go. Vandy had it red on second and four. When the Jefferson Pilot Sports crew is on the road covering SEC football, we like to eat at Huddle House and always enjoy their big house breakfast and lunch platters. Well, Dave, this is another indication, I think, of the changes going on at, at Vanderbilt. This team a year ago may have gotten beat 55 to nothing. Yeah. We did one of those games last year. And yes, that we was, did. Yeah. I don't even want to tell you the score. It was incredible, but... Uh, well, you know, as I said, you build in segments. You're looking for things. You're looking for people that are going to play hard the entire game. You're trying to get backup players a little bit of experience so they're, 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 they've got some time to play. Try to get things to happen. Banks being chased by Hillenmeyer. My goodness, Hunter Hillenmeyer is playing mm. maybe his best game of his Vanderbilt career today. Well, you just couldn't keep him out. Hyperextended elbow, you know how painful that has to be. But he is just running them down. Great range along the line. Zero in on that quarterback. His defensive linemen are keep, keeping people off him. And look at the speed he has. I think that's 17 tackles. Am I right today on that? 17 tackles. He had 18 against South Carolina, 16 against Georgia, 15 against Alabama, 16 against Florida, held to nine last week. And Dan Stricker, oh. one of their best receivers in the history of this school, and they've been playing football for well over 100 years, sits and ponders as his career comes to a close. Back after this. Tennessee leading by 21. Now about to attempt a 38-yard field goal. Alex Walls. Choppy turf right around where he will kick the football. Kick is up, and it is good. No problem for Alex Walls, who's 3 of 3 today. 28, 33, and 38. He is now 10 of 13 this season for the senior out of Bristol, Virginia. We'll step aside return to Nashville right after this.
Tennessee by 24. Last year, this Tennessee Tennessee team beat Vanderbilt 38 to nothing. So Vanderbilt trying to avoid the eight-quarter skunking. They'll have the football coming up. Brandon Smith back to return it. It has been a one-sided affair today. Tennessee has dominated time of possession. Well, how do we get to this point, Dave? We've got to go to the first drive of the game. And that's when Tennessee kind of put it all together and opened up the scoring. They certainly did. They ran the ball well. Cedric Houston brings strength into the line. Their offensive line controlled the line of scrimmage. Every time Vandy made a mistake, Tennessee was there to make them pay for it. They made them pay for it with, by touchdowns and field goals. And uh, Alex Walls has had a great day, three of three. Uh, they've gotten in great field position and, again, made Vanderbilt pay when they made mistakes. And Vanderbilt has just not been able to mount any kind of an offense where they could take the pressure off their defense. Davis with the first touchdown. Houston with the second touchdown. Here's Benji Walker. He's playing quarterback for the injured Jay Cutler. Walker, 5 of 12 today, 74 yards with an interception. Matthew Tant, 13 carries, 70 yards. A bunch of that came on a fake punt. Uh, it's like a mash unit over there, injured players. Crutches, braces. You know, Todd Turner, the athletic director at Vanderbilt, we spent some time with him yesterday, and, uh, you know, this has been a tough season, and he realized that it was going to be a tough season, but he was really optimistic about Bobby Johnson and the, and the, the fit the coach is for this program. Parker loose football, and Walker falls on it, but... Uh, Interesting, because he had some high-profile coaches that were uh, interested in the job, but he felt that Bobby Johnson would be the best fit. Yeah, and he now even feels stronger about it. He said that uh, he's doing all the right things. He's bringing the right type of player in. They were down at his missions office yesterday while we were there meeting with him, talking about players and their grades. And uh, he's got a lot to bring to this school. Todd also, Turner showed us uh, new weight room facilities and a new practice facility. And, uh, Making some changes around the Vandy campus and uh, good for the Commodores. Jim May popped up. A senior out of Lilburn, Georgia. 6'4", 300 pounder. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Down remains third. Yeah, that's one way for uh, Jim May to get mentioned number 72. Jim May, who is uh, already in grad school. There are the bowl eligible teams so far for the Southeastern Conference. Tennessee is getting in. Uh, Auburn as well, counting the win today by Tennessee, seven and four overall in the season. And South Carolina and Ole Miss are the other two teams that have a chance to become bowl eligible. And some work left to be done for those two clubs. Here's Matthew Chan, who's played very hard today. But uh, <laughs> Michigan led Ohio State in the fourth quarter, and the Buckeyes, who have done it all season long in the fourth quarter, come back and find a way to win. The BCS standings had Georgia fifth, but Miami and Ohio State have dodged a couple of bullets in their last two games. Miami on Thursday night against Pittsburgh, Washington State and Oklahoma. Georgia's running out of time, and uh, they're running out of bullets in their gun. They need some help yeah, to get to sure that championship do. game at the Fiesta Bowl. Mark Jones back to return another Greg Johnson punt. It's a good one. Mark Jones to the 34-yard line calls a fair catch with 2.06 to play. We'll return after this. 24-0, Tennessee leads Vanderbilt, 2.06 to go in the football game. off to Tinsley. We go under two minutes. Along with the win. Barry Booker, a friend of many at Jefferson Pilot Sports and uh, those who watch SEC basketball, one of our basketball analysts and a 
Vanderbilt graduate. Still holds some kind of record. Vanderbilt three-point shooting or something like that. I'm sure he'll tell me. He and I do about 20 games every year together. He and his wife, Rena, expecting a child in a couple of months. But uh, Barry, a big-time basketball star in his days back in the uh, mid-late 80s in Nashville. See him on Monday night. I got to head up to Knoxville, do Tennessee ball basketball. Tinsley. Vanderbilt picked up a win last night. As did the Volunteers in basketball. Buzz, what do you got? Dave, I think it's important to give credit to this Tennessee coaching staff as well. Uh, unlike or like Vanderbilt, it's been a different situation. It's not been what they expect at Tennessee. But a couple of weeks ago, the Vols were sitting at five and four. Randy Sanders was talking about sometimes, you know, because of their normal expectations, it was tough to come to work. But they fought through it. Now with the win next week, they can extend that string of eight win plus seasons to 14 in a row. So I think you've got to give uh, credit to the volunteer coaching staff. And keep that streak of eight straight New Year's Day bowl games alive. Tinsley takes the carry. Yeah, I, you know, it's been a tough season for Philip Fulmer. And it started when he started when Constantine Richmond, I believe, was the first of his big guns to go down. But he's, uh, you know, he's, he stayed positive. Yeah, I echo those sentiments. I think this may have been his finest coaching job, Philip Fulmer, and his staff. You can't lose 14, 15 starters for at least a game and re just keep the continuity, keep your offense together. They lost their quarterback. They've got a freshman out there, and he didn't put him in a position to lose. He's lost a lot on defense, but uh, they played hard this year, played tough in this football game. But next week is going to be great. Yeah. Should be a lot of fun, and Tennessee is going to have to be a, a balanced football team. And I think they tried to get there today in terms of throwing and running. Kentucky and Tennessee next week, but Tennessee wins against the Commodores 24 to nothing. Back to back shutouts against their neighbors to the West. 20 straight wins over Vanderbilt for the Tennessee Volunteers. We will return to Nashville after this.